salamander. Get out of my blood, salamander. I can't seem to blow off enough steam to get you out of my head. Soul cycle you to death. Run you out of my blood to San Pedro. And yet everywhere I go, it seems, there you are, and there I am. I don't want to sell my stories anymore. Stop pushing me. I want to leave them underneath the nightstand to be forgotten or remembered should my thoughts come upon them in the middle of the night after a beach day, or by you some afternoon to thumb through with your worn, warm after work hands. I love you, but you don't understand me. I'm a real poet. My life is my poetry. My love making is my legacy. My thoughts are not for sale. They're about nothing and beautiful and for free. And I wish that you could get that and love that about me because things that can't be bought can't be evaluated and that makes them beyond human reach, untouchable, safe, otherworldly, unable to be deciphered or metabolized, something metaphysical, like a view of the sea. On a summer day on the most perfect winding road taken in from your car seat, a thing perfect and ready to become a part of the texture of the fabric of something more ethereal, like Mount Olympus, where Zeus and Athena and the rest of the immortals play. It's like, you look at this picture and you think, guess where I am? Oklahoma. I saw you in the mirror. You were wearing your hair differently, carrying the air differently. You say you wear your hair long, parted in the middle long in solidarity, just like all his women. I'm going to read you a poem called L.A., Who Am I to Love You? L.A., I'm from nowhere, who am I to love you? L.A., I've got nothing, who am I to love you when I'm feeling this way and I've got nothing to offer? L.A., not quite the city that never sleeps, not quite the city that wakes, but the city that dreams for sure, if by dream you mean it nightmares. LA, I'm a dreamer, but I'm from nowhere. Who am I to dream? LA, I'm upset. I have complaints. Listen to me. They say I come from money, and I didn't, and I didn't even have love, and it's unfair. LA, I sold my life rights for a big check, but now I can't sleep at night, and I don't know why. Plus, I love sacks, so why did I do that when I know it won't last? L.A., I picked San Francisco because the man who doesn't love me lives there. L.A., I'm pathetic, but so are you. Can I come home now? Daughter to no one, table for one, party of thousands of people I don't know at Delilah where my ex-husband works. I'm so sick of this, but can I come home now? Mother to no one, private jet for one, back home to the Tudor house that borned a thousand murder plots. Hancock Park treated me very badly. I'm resentful. The witch on the corner, the neighbor that nobody wanted, the reason for Garcetti's extra security. L.A. I know I'm bad, but I have nowhere else to go. Can I come home now? I never had a mother. Will you let me make the sun my own for now, and the ocean my son? I'm quite good at tending to things despite my upbringing. Can I raise your mountains? Can I promise to keep them greener, make them my daughters, teach them about fire, warn them about water? I'm lonely, L.A. Can I come home now? I left my city for San Francisco. I'm riding from the Golden Gate Bridge, but it's not going as planned. I took a free ride off a billionaire and brought my typewriter and promised myself I would stay, but it's just not going the way that I thought. It's not that I feel different, and I don't mind that it's not hot. It's just that I belong to no one, which means there's only one place for me, the city not quite awake. The city not quite asleep. The city that's still deciding how good it can be. And also, I can't sleep without you. No one's ever really held me like you. Not quite tightly, but certainly I feel your body next to me, vaping lightly next to me. And I love that you love the neon lights like me, orange in the distance. We both love that, and I love that we have that in common. Also, neither one of us can go back to New York, for you are unmoving. As for me, it won't be my city again until I'm dead. 
Fuck the New York Post. LA, who am I to need you when I've needed so much, asked for so much, and what I've been given I'm not yet sure. I may never know that either until I'm dead. For now, though, what I do know is that I don't deserve you, not you at your best in your splendor with towering eucalyptus trees that sway in my dominion, not you at your worst, totally on fire, unlivable, unbreathable. I don't deserve you. You see, you have a mother, a continental shelf, a larger piece of land from where you came, and I am an orphan, a little seashell that rests upon your native shores. One of many, for sure, but because of that, I surely must love you closely to the most out of anyone. And for that reason, let me love you. Don't mind my desperation. Let me hold you, not just for a vacation, but for real and for forever. Make it real life. Let me be a real wife to you. Girlfriend, lover, mother, friend, I adore you. Don't be put off by my quick wordedness. I'm generally quite quiet, quite a meditator. Actually, I'll do very well down by Paramahansa Yogananda's Realization Center, I'm sure. I promise you'll barely even notice me, unless you want to notice me, unless you prefer a rambunctious child, in which case I can turn it on too. I'm good on the stage, as you may know. You might have heard of me. So either way, I'll fit in just fine. So just love me by doing nothing, except for perhaps by not shaking the county line. I'm yours if you'll have me quietly or loudly, sincerely your daughter, and regardless, you're mine. Sylvia, I knew what you meant when you talked about swimming in the ocean and leaving your patent leather black shoes pointing towards it while you swam. It tickled you to leave them there. It was the thought of a young child or of a lost fairy, and it reminded me of who I am. That's why I'm now at this facility by the ocean, and why I go barefoot, and why I go calmly, why I leave my shoes up by the stairway. I do it for you, and I do it for me. Because having learned from others, and from you, I learned there was a missing piece to finding existential calmness and domestic bliss that leads to peace. You see, you can't fall in love with a man like Ted or a musician who sings about being free. A woodworker doesn't a good man make if he only wants to be on TV. You have to separate the wheat from the shaft. You have to be discerning. It takes diligence, consequence, and other things to keep that sea from churning and to keep yourself from longing to let those painted waves take you under. It isn't just the water black that makes the body plunder from high sea cliffs. I know, my dear, I wish that I had been here or there. I wish that you were here now if you're not now, because who knows how these things work. Sylvia, Marilyn, Violet, Diana, all of my kind women who came before me blonde. I dyed my hair black for you. I turned my back on that black pond. I swear I won't stop till I'm dead. And here I am at 34, and what for? I brought my pair of baby patent leather shoes and turned them the other way towards the sea cliff stairs, not at the ocean, back up to the safe facility instead. And I thought of you as I walked 280 wooden steps dynamited into the cliffs 180 years before. I let myself into room two and got undressed, contemplative and sore. And as I fell asleep by gabapentin, I lay my head on the pillow. I stretched out my hand on the cool white linen and I sang you a lemon melody. I kept the shoes on the sill by the window seat in case you got restless and your spirit wanted to leave. And I hugged you with my baby's breath and sang your soul to bed the way I would have if you had been my child or if I had children, my Queen Anne's lace heart weightless on your little head. I thought I was rich, and I am, but not how you think. I live in a Tudor house under the freeway in Mar Vista by the beach. And when you call, I take my phone outside to the picnic table that I bought from the Rose Bowl. I listen to the rushing cars above and think about the last time you visited me and the last time we made love. 
how the noise got louder and louder during rush hour until it sounded like the sea and it felt like the ocean was the sky and that I was flying because you were two feet taller than me until you took me in your arms and I could touch the stars and they all fell down around my head and I became an angel and you put me to bed. Happy. People think that I'm rich and I am, but not how they think. I have a truck with a, with a gold key chain in the ignition and on the back it says, happy, joyous, and free. Happy. And when I drive, I think about the last time my friends were driving with me how the radio was so loud that we couldn't hear the words, so we became the music, happily. They write that I'm rich, and I am, but not how they think. <laughs> I have a safe that I call the boyfriend box, and in it, I saved every receipt, every movie theater ticket just to remind me of all the things I've loved and lost and loved again unconditionally. You joke that I'm rich, and I am, but not how you think. I live in a Tudor house under the freeway off of Rose Avenue, 12 blocks from the beach. And when you call, I put your sweater on and I put you on speaker and chat for hours and hours underneath the trees. And I think about the last time you were here lying next to me, how the noise from the cars got louder and louder during rush hour until it sounded like a river or a stream. And it felt like we were swimming, but it wasn't just a dream. We were just happy. All right, so this is another poem called Never to Heaven. May my eyes always stay level to the horizon. May they never gaze as high as heaven to ask why. May I never go where angels fear to tread so as to have to ask for answers in the sky. The whys in this lifetime I found are inconsequential compared to the magic of the nowness, the solution to most questions. There are no reasons, and if there are, I'm wrong. But at least I won't have spent my life waiting, looking for God in the clouds of the dawn, or listening out for otherworldly contact 30 billion light years on. No, I'll let the others do the pondering, and I'll be sitting on the lawn, reading something inconsequential with the television on. I'll be up early to rise, though, of course, but only to make you a pot of coffee. That's what I was thinking this morning, Joe, that it's times like this as the marine layer lifts off the sea from the view of our favorite restaurant, that I pray that I may always keep my eyes level to your eye line, never downcast at the tablecloth. You see, Joe, it's times like this as the marine layer lifts off the sea on the dock with our candle lit, that I think to myself, there are things you still don't know about me. Like sometimes I'm afraid my sadness is too big and that one day you might have to help me handle it. But until then, may I always keep my eyes level to this skyline, assessing the glittering new development off of the coast of Long Beach, never to heaven or revenant. Because I have faith in man as strange as it seems in times like these. And it's not just because of the warmth I found in your brown eyes but because I believe in the goodness in me, that it's firm enough to plant a flag in, or a rosebud, or to build a new life.